So hi guys and welcome to yet another YouTube tech video. Uh, today we are just basically going to be talking about the two key pieces of any home network. Everything in your home network comes in and out of both your router and your cable modem. And today we're going to be talking, uh, at least in this first video, we're going to be covering the physical aspects of what you can achieve on the cheap to improve the performance of these devices. Um, we've got an AC1750 router. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of jumped the gun on this and I already removed the lid. And the lid, the way this unit was made, is basically using inactive cooling. The lid, as, as you can see in the picture, was just a solid hard piece on top. No venting at all. Basically, either the heat had to dissipate through the plastic lid or it kind of had to kind of make its way out the sides. Either way, I just noticed one day how the, the, it, was, it was just hot to, hot to the touch. So we peeled the lid off of it, exposing a generous heat sink from ASUS. Uh, unfortunately though, the unit still is fairly hot. And I really kind of lucked out in my travels at work to where I came across the guys at work were disassembling a laptop stand. And built into the bottom of it was this handy dandy little fella here. It's just a couple of five volt DC vans. They don't use hardly any electricity. They don't make a lot of noise and they don't move that much air. But I gotta tell you, they move just enough air, slip the wire underneath, and all it has to do is just rest on top of that heat sink. And in like five or 10 minutes, that heat sink is nice and cool to the touch. Now, sure, the unit was, you're gonna argue, yes, the unit was made to work from the factory with the lid on it. What I'm doing is I'm simply improving what I've got and what I paid for by, acti by adding a little, quote, active cooling. And you're not gonna really see any kind of a speed increase. However, your ping times in gaming and such are going to decrease a little bit. I'm a huge World of Warships fan. My ping times have decreased a little bit. And especially on my network with my family, I've got somebody streaming a movie on Hulu or Netflix. I got somebody else playing Fortnite. Who doesn't play Fortnite? and you're gonna notice a hiccup in the game, you're gonna notice a buffer in your video. Well, by cooling down your electronics like this, it's gonna actually help less corruption because heat, of course, is an electronics worst enemy. Moving on from the router, of course, um, when, we first log or when we first subscribe to Charter Spectrum, uh, they, of course, always throw in you know, the customary, the, the, free, the free modem, which is, of course, rolled into your you know, monthly subscription. It was a low-end Cisco modem. It had an Intel Puma chipset in it, only ran at 300 megahertz, and it was only four channels wide. So, unfortunately, my router running with my Broadcom chipset at 600 megahertz, that's, it was, it was, my bottleneck was now on my cable modem. So, I decided to do a little research and scored a nice TP-Link um, cable modem. Also has a Broadcom chipset in it that runs at 600 megahertz. Only this unit here is now 12 channels wide. However, again, 600 megahertz processor, they're gonna generate a little heat. And that's exactly what this unit's doing right now. It's hot to the touch. And I've got it laying on its side. It's actually meant to stand upright, according to the picture, according to the factory. And then you're just, you're just forcing all that heat now through even smaller vents out the top of the unit. So after doing some research, which little little work with uh, peering through these tiny holes, and with my flashlight, and also just feeling the unit in general, we found that there is a small inactive silver heat sink on this side of the unit. This is where the processor's sitting, this is where all the action's happening. So I decided to go uh, MacGyver on it, and I ended up making my own little active cooling fan right here, which basically I took was just an old USB cable and a little power brick, only I cut this end of it off. You match up the red and the black wires. And this is an old, as you guys probably recognize, it's just an old CPU cooler fan. And I did the same thing on this. And I didn't even bother to mount it because it's just going to sit here on my shelf. And I got to tell you, again, in another 10 minutes, that unit, it, it runs nice and cool. And on top of, sure, on top of a 600 megahertz processor, on top of the fact that it's 12 channels wide, and in the next video, too, we'll also show you, you can log into your cable modem, and I, and I can see that through Spectrum, I'm actually connecting in all 12 channels, which also helps a lot when it comes to all the, all the general network traffic that comes in and out of my place. 
So, with the really just cheap, subtle refinements that we've made, um, our Netflix movies load faster, there's no more buffering, uh, our ping times have actually decreased in all of our gaming, and um, overall, even when friends come over with their network devices, there's just no more hesitation in the network. Um, so anyways, um, that's just a couple of physical refinements that we found um, in this part, in this video. Next video, hopefully there'll be, hopefully there'll be several more. Um, the next one I'm going to delve into all of the different refinements that you can get from, um, from buying your own router. Uh, these routers, of course, sure, they're, they're basically plug and play. They, the manufacturer tries to make it as simple as possible. Um, and they work. They don't work real good, but they work enough for your average, you know, John Q home user. However, there's always going to be us power dorks out there that are going to get in there, try to tweak it, refine it, because when you get online, and you're online gaming especially, you want to be on equal terms with the guys you're playing with or playing against. So you want to have good ping times, you want to have a high speed, no matter what kind of server you're connecting to. And in the next video, I'm going to show you at the software end just how to achieve those better performance values. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you learned a little something. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks.